Hello again. This is part two, and I'll be describing what it means to work in a holistic way. Uh, if you've not watched part one, I suggest that you do, uh, because it explains a lot about how intravenous NAD works. And now we'll go over what it means to have a more holistic approach uh, using IV NAD. So again, just to review, the IV NAD would increase mitochondrial function inside our cells, which increases the energy production, or ATP, which is necessary to actively transport these drug residues, environmental toxins, and biotoxins produced by various pathogens. So to increase the uh, mitochondrial function, or ATP production, we need to think about food, the feeding the mitochondria. So uh, some research has shown that a ketogenic diet can increase NAD. This would be, would be uh, very familiar to, probably to a lot of you. Even intermittent fasting, which means uh, could be as simple as skipping breakfast, um, having low glycemic juices, even a water fast uh, through the morning would be fine. Uh, using uh, lemon juice, a little bit of maple syrup uh, until lunchtime would improve the, um, or increase the population or amount of NAD. These are three products that we typically recommend. Actually, the first product we typically recommend the MitoCore, which is uh, formulated based on research of all the different nutrients that mitochondria require to produce NAD. The other two products are in the salvage pathway. There's different ways, uh, like tryptophan is sort of the first amino acid required in several steps to make NAD, but NAD is recycled uh, using these two other nutrients. Uh, then we have to activate lymph flow. As you remember, these drug residues exit cells, enter our lymph system, so we've got to uh, make sure the lymph is moving like a river rather than being like a swamp. We use um, an old naturopathic therapy called lymphatic or constitutional hydrotherapy, which is the applications of hot and cold compresses to the chest and back to activate the lymphatic pump. Our inversion table, uh, we're using gravity to help the lymph flow to those two ducts below the clavicles. And then Physic Energetics makes uh, four different uh, vibrational or homeopathic liquids to also help the body to move lymph or to clear the lymphatic system. Then, as the lymph flows back into the blood, now it puts some a little uh, strain on liver and kidneys, so we must support liver function. We use a Physica a product called Hepatogest with all the nutrients which would optimize liver function. Alpha lipoic acid is for improving liver function. It's also part of the Krebs cycle. And then we use glutathione as a intravenous push. So then as the liver is detoxifying these drug residues from the blood, they will enter gallbladder, the gallbladder. So it's really important to have good drainage in the gallbladder, which for a lot of people is very sluggish. So uh, the old naturopathic uh, formula, bitters, is used for that. Beta plus does have bile salts in it, plus a concentrated beet extract to uh, sort of emulsify the sludge that's often found in the gallbladder. Artichoke is just there because a very common, well-known herb for the gallbladder. So from the gallbladder, as you know, the residues would then flow down into the upper part of the small intestine. So to help remove or to move those residues through the intestines as quickly as possible, we use colon hydrotherapy, which helps flush toxins out fairly rapidly. We advise people to be taking uh, buffered vitamin C, not only good for the immune system, but if we can take them up to 
somewhat close to bowel tolerance and they're having two or three bowel movements a day and getting those residues out. Most people are very familiar with the coffee enema, which they can do when they go back to their, their room or their home. And then the other important, uh, important pathway for detoxification uh, is the skin. So when there are these residues floating around in the bloodstream, the innate intelligence of the body is saying, get these toxins, these poisons out of my, my body to protect my brain and my neurological system and my reproductive system. So oftentimes for, the, for people, their, their liver and kidneys are not working well. Their colon is, uh, the gut ecology is very poor. So the body will shunt or compartmentalize these residues in the least important cells of the body, which are fat cells, most of which reside just under the skin called the subdermal fat layer. So we prefer to get these toxins out through the skin through perspiration uh, rather than having the toxins released uh, into the body. So saunas are a really important part of the program. So if you remember these other causes of mitochondrial dysfunction, of course we have the drugs and nutritional deficiencies, but we have the biotoxins from bacteria and also environmental toxins. So an overview is that we need to work on people's nutrition to make sure that the, the, the cells are being fed. We need to get rid of the toxins and we need to get rid of the uh, problems from the biotoxins from the bacteria. So of course we're gonna advise people about improving the quality of the food they're eating, more nutrient dense foods. Many people have Digestive problems are not breaking the food down completely, so we often suggest digestive enzymes. We have to address gut ecology because that's where the nutrients are assimilated through the gut lining. And there's always a question about leaky gut, especially when people have been you know, taking non steroidal anti-inflammatories because that will lead to inflammation and then the, the gut lining starts to break down. For the chemicals, it's a matter of um, educating people about avoidance. Our environment, you know, we're subjected to, exposed to, you know, 20,000 different chemicals. People have to understand uh, what's going on in their homes, the, the off-gassing of various chemicals, the VOCs, volatile organic compounds, the cleaning solutions they're used. People are, you know, they have their heat, heat on in the winter and air conditioning on in the summer. They're recycling the air over and over again. So they must be attentive to lifestyle and the choices they're making as far as uh, the chemicals in their home. And also the um, intermittent fasting, again, that's increasing NAD levels, which is going to help to detoxify. There's a number of intravenous therapies used for um, detoxification and, of course, the saunas. And then we come to pathogens in the blood. Uh, this is um, partly an investigative thing. A lot of blood tests don't show these pathogens. We've got to use uh, something which I'll come to the dark field microscope to make a sort of an assessment of pathogens. These are giving off their waste products, their biotoxins. They're also taking nutrients from our blood. So we're using ozone. We have the 10 pass Zotsman ozone treating about 2000 cc's of blood or two liters. Uh, people's volume, blood volume is between four and five liters. So we're treating about half the blood with ozone to, to kill off pathogens. We use ultraviolet blood therapy, similar to ozone, but a little bit different and then vitamin C and other nutrients to support the immune system. Mold has been around. I've been in practice about 34 years and I've seen so many people with mold issues. This again is diagnosed or assessed uh, through the dark field microscope. They have to assess their home. You can't expect to you know, reduce these pathogens, the mold, then go through the IV NAD and all that and they go back into a moldy environment. So uh, ozone again, ultraviolet, vitamin C, the ozone, uh, so the ozone sauna is really effective for mold issues. It's a cabinet people sit in and we put uh, ozone into the cabinet. And then you've got to support, you know, the gallbladder especially, but both liver and gallbladder support. 
And then after all this, you also have to assess a person's biochemistry and their hormones. Uh, often what we found is that people have been put on, let's say, antidepressive two or you know, three, four, five years ago, and the physician did not really investigate the underlying biochemical hormonal issues. So those issues, even though the person was put on a pharmaceutical, those issues still remain. So you've got to understand the biochemistry, the hormonal issues that might be causing certain symptoms. IV NAD is not going to correct this. So blood labs, we use LabCorp for a very, a very extensive panel covering uh, most every well, not everything, but a huge number of tests for complete blood count, white blood cell count, liver function, thyroid, vitamin D. So we use uh, LabCorp for blood labs. We use uh, Labrix for our saliva hormone testing. Females would be uh, estradiol and progesterone, and both female and male would be the cortisol production by the adrenals. Uh, cell science systems, we do genetic swab testing. This is a lot of information about what uh, nutrients should not be used and what should be used. The, uh, the DHA labs is for urine testing for what are called cryptopyroles. These are proteins that bind up some really important nutrients, especially B6 and zinc and magnesium. B6 is so important for neurological issues, for assist as a cofactor assisting the brain to make its hormones, its neurotransmitters. Zinc is used in so many different parts of the uh, production of various enzymes. The dark field microscope we're using to assess the quality of the red cells, if there's stickiness, the red cells are all clumped together, the size of the white blood cells, the activity of the white blood cells, looking for bacteria including spirochetes and moles. Viruses are too small, but the white cells will have a certain appearance. If there's an active viral issue, they look like they're pregnant. We also use the electrodermal screening for acupuncture points. This is according to Dr. Vole. So every internal organ has a reflex point on the skin, and by using this uh, tool, we can kind of assess the energy or the vitality of various, uh, various organs and tissues in the body. So the most common underlying issues, you know, besides the B6 and zinc and all that, that come up with people would be blood sugar dysregulation. People are slipping into hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, which stimulates in part cortisol, but adrenaline. So people are having, you know, feeling wired, but tired. Cells need two things. Well, they need NAD, but they also require oxygen. If you don't get oxygen, we die. They require glucose. If we don't get glucose, we go into a coma. So a lot of symptoms are because of a lack of oxygen for various reasons and also not adequate amounts of, of glucose. The second most common thing we come across is suboptimal thyroid hormones. This is an epidemic and doctors in general do not know all the labs are required to assess thyroid hormones. So if you have suboptimal thyroid hormones and this is not corrected through nutrition and sometimes a prescription for thyroid hormones is required, using IV NAD is not going to uh, correct this type of issue. And the person, all these underlying biochemical issues must be optimized if a person is going to receive the full and lasting benefits of NAD. Of course, there's uh, chronic adrenal fatigue for a lot of reasons because of lifestyle, nutritional habits, um, and also finally uh, vitamin, let's see, coming to uh, female hormones. Uh, most common is uh, progesterone, uh, my, headaches, uh, insomnia, uh, depression. So this is a really important assessment through saliva hormone testing to see where a female, uh, where estradiol and where progesterone are. Then there's low vitamin D and low cholesterol. Vitamin D is a hormone. Um, the reference range that docs look at, at, the lower end of that reference range, I think is around 30. So if a, a woman has a reading of 32 to 35, somewhere in there, still they're told your vitamin D levels are, are fine, they're normal, but they're not. A woman should have up to 60 to 70, a man up to 70 to 80. This is a happy hormone, and it's really important to optimize those. Uh, cholesterol is one of the most important nutrients. 
all of the glands that make steroid hormones, steroid hormones being the male hormones, the female hormones, and all the hormones made by the adrenals. These are all steroid hormones. The glands require cholesterol. Low cholesterol is going to uh, cause low levels of these, of these hormones. So how are you ever going to correct low steroid hormones, which has many different symptoms, with IV NAD? It's impossible. So if you'd like more information, please visit our website, ivnaddrugaddictions.com. You can uh, get a lot more information. You can download my free ebook. Uh, it'll cover all of this in much greater detail. I don't ask for your email address. There's our phone number. We're located in Salt Lake City, Utah. We run an outpatient clinic. It'll explain all that in the book if you're long distance or local. So I would appreciate a like if you've enjoyed the information you received, and I thank you.